Welcome back to Hyperbaric Living Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Masha, and today I have with me Dr. Scott Barber. He is an orthopedic surgeon. He practices in Atlanta, um, and uh, I found him on social media because he has the most entertaining videos about the actual surgery that's being performed. But today we'll talk about hyperbaric oxygen therapy and its role pre and post surgery in sports medicine, in, um, in orthopedic medicine, taking from your experience and expertise. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Barber. Really excited to have you with me. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. did it start for you? How did you learn about hyperbaric therapy? Well, I went to medical school and in my orthopedic training, we had experience with hyperbaric therapy, especially for patients in trauma centers with uh, bad wounds affecting primarily lower extremities and areas of the body where they have tenuous blood supply. And if you don't have a good sub blood supply to your tissues, the tissues can't heal. So we commonly put trauma patients in who had problems with wounds and also diabetics. The number one reason that people undergo amputation of their lower extremities has to do with complications resulting from diabetes and the peripheral vascular disease that they develop after years of having a high blood sugar, which damages their blood vessels. And so when you put people in a hyperbaric chamber, you're delivering a higher oxygen tension to the tissues, which promotes healing. And so I just extrapolated out that knowledge and that understanding to patients with other injuries. It makes sense to me that if we are able to get traumatic patients with serious traumatic wounds and diabetics uh, with wounds that are that are developing primarily because they have poor blood flow, and if we put them in a hyperbaric chamber and those patients do better, that the increased oxygen tension should be able to help patients who are healing from other injuries. And that's when I started uh, putting it together. And, and that got me started on hyperbaric chambers. And I have had good anecdotal results uh, using this hyperbaric chamber with a variety of different injuries over the years. And what results have you seen? So the first time I really started using it, I've I've always used it in my professional athletes. Um, they they are uh, into it, you know, they, they know about it. Uh, high performance athletes are always trying to look look at ways to get that extra edge. And so hyperbaric chamber is something that they've been using for a long time. The hard shell hyperbaric chambers that are like a little submarine, those you can go up above one atmosphere to two atmospheres is what our shells go to. You can go higher if you want, but it, the literature shows us in things we can measure like with diabetic wound healing and things like that, you need two atmospheres of pressure to, to have any real healing. And so I started putting my patients in patient, um, an atmospheric chamber where I'm able to raise the atmosphere to two atmospheres. So when we're living in our regular lives, we have one atmosphere of pressure. Hyperbaric chamber, we go in, we actually apply pressure. It goes to two atmospheres and the patient is actually having oxygen delivered to them. So they're getting a maximum amount of oxygen uh, delivered to their tissues. And I have seen improvements for things like diabetes, I've seen it for crush injuries. So in the field of orthopedic surgery, we have patients every now and then a car or a forklift or something will run over a patient's foot. It crushes, they heal from the broken bones and things like that. And things sort of to, sort of start to work again, but they have this chronic pain burning and, and they're, it's very painful. And we call that a crush injury. It's a crush to all those cells that are around the foot. And so even though when you look at it macroscopically and everything seems to look okay, they still have this pain. I started putting these patients in hyperbaric chambers and many of them got significant improvement. And so all over the years, I started taking all of my patients that I've done everything else I can think of and they're still having pain or problems. I stick them in the hyperbaric chamber and many times we have uh, good results and never do I have bad results, meaning... I never put in anybody in the hyperbaric chamber and have a negative consequence. So to me, you know, the worst thing that's going to happen to you is nothing. And so in a lot of cases, it's worth it to try it. So if we go back to this crush injury, and let's say a patient is experiencing a lot of pain, and you suggest to them that um, uh, they can use hyperbaric oxygen therapy, uh, how many sessions uh, would they normally um, look at? Well, you know, usually with a hyperbaric chamber, we put somebody in for one hour and we try to do that three times a week. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason to that. 
a lot of the research that we do really has to do with availability. I mean, how many doctors actually have access to a hyperbaric chamber? And so because most doctors don't have access to a hyperbaric chamber, it doesn't get a lot of um, it doesn't have a lot of research uh, <laughs> directed towards it. And doctors don't have any real world practical experience with it because they don't have access to it. I have one, so I use it, but I have seen a lot of benefit with patients. Um, and I've not, like I said, I have not had any negative effects. And so to me, it's a, a good source of treatment. And it makes sense to me when I think about the science of how the body works and the delivery of oxygen on the cellular level and how the body heals itself after illness or injury. Uh, but any patient would ask you probably, how many sessions would I need? So you do it three times a week for how many weeks? Uh, we usually do it until we get a result. I have patients that will come once a week. I have mm -hmm. patients that come once in a while. I have a lot of professional athletes that come after uh, um uh, you know, a competition where I have a lot of MMA fighters that I treat, uh, professional football players, golfers, um, other, other types of athletes. And, you know, I guess sort of my baseline is my, I would like you to come once a week for an hour. Uh, if you can do more, we do more. I have some people I've had a, Olympic athletes that go in every day for a period of time of weeks, usually, uh, until their competition. And again, when you ask them how they feel, they'll come out and they say, I feel great a lot of times. And, you know, how do you measure that? How do you measure that they're feeling great because of the hyperbarics and not just because the psychological effect or, or maybe some other factor? But like I say, it seems to be working. It seems to be effective and it's definitely safe. And I don't, I don't believe it is placebo. I mean, there are things we can measure, like I said, with the traumatic wounds and the diabetic wounds, there's no question it's having an effect. I mean, that's, that's not in dispute. It's just, how do you measure it for other types of injuries? You know, people who have diabetic wounds or these big traumatic wounds and things like that, you can actually see and, and we'll treat them without the hyperbarics. You know, we're treating them. They're not getting better, not getting better. They're getting worse. And it's like, okay, we need to do hyperbaric therapy. We put them in the hyperbarics and within a period of weeks, a wound that wasn't healing maybe for months ahead of time is now all of a sudden healed great. There's no question that the hyperbarics is doing it. And that's not just me saying that. That's supported by the medical literature. The only thing that I've been doing is taking that information and extrapolating it out to patients with other injuries like ACLs or shoulder injuries or or basically just body. You know, when you go out and you play a, a competition at a high level, a professional rugby player, you know, their body is beaten up and they have a lot of different injuries. You know, nothing that needs surgery, but bangs and bruises and sprains and strains all over their body. You put them in that hyperbaric chamber and they they seem to me to be recovering much more quickly and they're ready for the next competition and they're able over the course of a long season to, to stay healthy and stay at their best. I have the hyperbaric chamber as a tool. I have it available to me. It pops into my head all the time and I try to think about all of my patients. What is everything that I can do to make somebody better? And, you know, doctor is teacher. My job is to know about things. I share that information with my patients and I let them make the decisions. And, you know, a lot of these questions come up, like for me, even I could live my life in a hyperbaric chamber and be super healthy. Yeah, but then I can't do other things. So obviously, um, you know, there's there's trade offs there. Uh, but I, I feel strongly about the hyperbaric chamber. And as I'm getting older, I'm going to be 60 in three years. So. I'm starting to think more and more about getting in that hyperbaric chamber and keeping my tissues healthy for this last uh, last stretch. Disease prevention. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it, much easier to prevent a disease than to treat it afterwards. And you should know better than anybody else um, doing the surgery. Well, I'll use the hyperbaric chamber in situations where uh, patients have um, known problems with healing. And one of the classic ones is there's an, an injury called a pylon fracture or really any severe ankle trauma that you get. The soft tissue there has a tenuous blood supply. You have a lot of area around your ankle where there's really just skin and then the bone is right there. And if you lose tissue, it's very difficult to get that to heal. And because of the poor blood supply, it's also prone to infection. So when I have those patients with that kind of trauma, I put them in the hyperbaric chamber to give them the best opportunity for wound healing and also to prevent infection from, from setting in. I see. So you just using your judgment to see in which particular situations it would be appropriate 
in best therapy, considering cost benefit analysis and all other factors that could be. Exactly. And it's not just my judgment. It's my patient's judgment. I give mm -hmm. them the information and if somebody wants to use it, I'll make it available. And, you know, I try to not, you know, sound the alarm like, well, if you don't use the hyperbaric chamber, then everything's going to go to pot. No, I mean, most people with ACLs, they do just fine in or out of the hyperbaric chamber and I let them know it. And then they can be the ones to decide if it's something they want to do. Do you combine hyperbarics with other therapies, um, other regenerative therapies or um, for prevention? How do you normally do it? Absolutely. We do a lot of platelet-rich plasma in my clinic. I do do stem cells, but the platelet-rich plasma for sure is helping. There's no question in my mind. I've been using it about 15 years now. And it's a similar type of situation where I've had patients with chronic problems where there's no other treatment available. They're not getting better with therapy or anything else. And I start doing the PRP injections and they are having uh, recovery. Uh, have you ever uh, tried combining um, plasma rich um, um, injections with hyperbaric therapy? You knew I was going to ask this question <laughs> because you're oh. smiling. Of course, I combine everything. I actually combine the steroid with the PRP. Um, I did that in my back and that worked really well. And I do a lot of, if I think it's right for the patient, I'll combine steroid and PRP. I combine hyperbarics with the PRP all the time and other things, obviously the physical therapy. And so I've always been open to the concept of non-traditional ways of medicine, just because I understand, you know, not everything we do in medicine is amenable to um you know, a double line crossover randomized controlled study. And so the things that I do though are based in science. Like for example, with the hyperbarics, I understand about how oxygen is delivered to the tissues on a cellular level and how the, you know, transport of electrons cause the, uh, you know, the, the biological effects in our body, that is evidence-based medicine. So I'm saying to myself, okay, if I know that's happening on a cellular level, it seems to me that if I got a person who's in in a healing situation that if I put them in a hyperbaric chamber, that that ought to improve their healing. And then when I do that and it seemingly helps granted on esoteric sort of things, like, you know, they, they seem better, they feel better. They're telling me to do better. I have a gut feeling that when I compare them to my other patients, they're doing better. That is meaningful. And as a physician, we are often trained about this concept of turning the corner, meaning when you see a patient who's sick, it's very obvious. Like, they are sick. How do you know? I mean, it's like a beautiful woman. How would you know? It's like, well, I can't describe it, but when I see it, I know it. And I've had this experience many times in my medical career where I've seen a patient who I'm like, you are not right. We go, we work them up, we take care of them. And then when they, we call it turning the corner, when you go and you just look at them and you know, okay, they're better. And I recently had a professional athlete who had a very serious car accident, a lot of it was complicated issue, but I was looking at him and I was just like, you are, he was in my clinic. And I was like, you look horrible. So I was like, we need to go to the hospital and get a um, nutrition panel. And sure enough, from all his injuries and everything like that, his nutrition was terrible. He wasn't healing well. He had bad wounds. So we got his nutrition up. We got him back into the hyperbaric chamber and other things. Uh, he, had, he needed a bunch of surgeries too, but he ultimately healed. So this concept that a physician can look at a patient and know that they look good or they look bad or they're feeling better is a real thing. It's a real phenomenon. And that's part of the clinical experience. This was an amazing episode. I learned a lot. I'm sure my listeners also learned a lot. Um, to end it, I'd like to ask you if um, if you have a story in mind of a patient who used a hyperbaric chamber in your clinic and got better. Oh, I have so many stories of those. Um, I have many patients who've had these crush injuries to the foot. That was when I really was invested in, I'm going to buy a hyperbaric chamber. Uh, so I bought the one hard shell one and I really started doing it for my patients with these crush injuries. They're having this burning and this chronic pain and I've seen it all my career. And now I put my patients in there and I mean, I, I can't be a hundred percent sure, but it seems to me that everybody I've put in there has had significant improvement in their pain, if not complete resolution. Um, I've had other uh, patients, diabetics with wounds that have been chronic. I put them in there. Those wounds have healed. That's not even controversial. Uh, that that's well, well documented in the literature. And then I have a particular professional athlete who we have done quite a bit to, who's on the verge of doing something very special. And I want to keep that a secret, uh, but we will be sharing that story when he accomplishes what I think he's going to accomplish. And there's a whole lot of 
um, story to tell there, and not the least of which is the hyperbaric chamber. Guys, if you like this episode, please share it with a friend or family or whoever might benefit from this information. And otherwise, I'll see you next week.